Hello and welcome back to Module 5 of this Games in Schools course. Module 5 is all about designing games and in this short video I'm going to be talking about why I think it's important to teach about games design in schools. I guess the first point and the most important point is that we want young people from across Europe to become creators and not just consumers of content. We want young people to be able to create games and other digital content in order to contribute to the European digital economy and not just consume games and play games for recreational purposes, although I'm not saying that this isn't important as well. In order to do this, different schools and different school systems need to make sure they've got some kind of progressive games design network. And I'm suggesting here that we introduce concepts of games design all the way from very, very early on, perhaps the age of three, all the way to the age of 18 and beyond at university or within higher education. One of the reasons why I think this is important is because we know that in Europe we're short of computer coders and we're going to need more and more computer coders as the world continues to get more and more high tech. But the problem with computer coding is it's actually quite hard and it's also pretty boring as well. But one of the ways that we might be able to inspire a younger generation to get into computer coding is actually through games design. If we can use some of these progressive games design tools then hopefully that might encourage them to get into coding as well and not just build games but also other digital content. Of course, games design tools don't just teach about coding skills. There are a number of other games design tools as well, such as Minecraft and Little Big Planet, which are just really about building immersive worlds, rather than talking about some of the more delicate computational thinking uh, tasks that we have in more sophisticated games design tools. But we'll come back to some of these games design tools in later videos. The other thing that I want to make a case for in terms of game design in school is that it can be incredibly cross-curricular in terms of a cross-curricular project or an interdisciplinary learning project. Even if you've never played computer games before, I'm sure that if you look at the silhouettes of some of these characters here, you might recognise them. The reason that you might recognise them is because computer games characters, just like movie characters, are now part of our cultural framework from across Europe. And behind every single computer game character of a popular game is a multi-million pound budget and a massive production team. In fact, some of these characters have been with us and they've been around for more than 20 years. They really are part of our family home and our family lifestyle. And as I say, behind every single one of these different computer games that we've got, we also have a team of people that are working to actually produce the game. And these people develop the character, develop the story, develop scenery. And of course, we're also going to need people who are good with physics and mathematics so they can work with different physics engines within the games as well to make sure that things happen when we want them to happen. Now how about a great cross-curricular project where young people use some of the tools that are mentioned in later videos to design a game, but other people write the story, design the characters, do the marketing, and also perhaps even design the packaging for the game as well. As I say, computer games can be a fantastic way in order to create cross-curricular projects. Throughout this short series of videos, I'm also going to be flagging up one or two resources that have come from the Royal Society of Edinburgh. The reason that I'm going to do this is A, because they're pretty up to date, and they're being added to all of the time. And the second reason is that they're free and they're also aimed at school aged children. And they've been written with teachers, perhaps reluctant teachers in mind. Finally, don't forget, it's always good to set you a little bit of a task. And what I want you to have a little think about in this video is how could you use computer games in your classroom? Or have you got any ideas about how you could design a cross curricular project using the design of a computer game as the context for learning? See you in the next video and hope to follow some of these discussions online.